Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. We do have, we do have the ladies here tonight. It's kind of, this, this is ladies' night. It's ladies' night. You'll never get rid of me. You'll never get rid of me. I always have to be here. I'm kind of like... You know, what do they call it? What is it? The uh, the ringleader? What is the guy in the circus? Yeah, the ringleader. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of like that. So I have to be here. But what are, what's on the what's on the minds of the women? I kind of want to hear about Rhonda Mary's um, recent event. I was following Uh-oh. it on Instagram. Oh, so you go right in. I want to ask her about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right in. <laughs> I was trying to ease into that, Rhonda, but okay. He's like, boom, straight. Yeah. So you went to, let's just, let, just to let set it up for the folks out there, what was this event you went to? So I basically went to a 2A rally that mm-hmm. was actually hosted by a local Black Lives Matter chapter in Richmond, Virginia. So okay. that's why I was this weekend. They actually invited me to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I spoke while I was there. I got a chance to meet some really cool people and got the, a chance to meet the um, young man that is uh, basically leading that organization. So yeah. can you tell us the name of the particular name of this uh, BLM? Chapter? Yes, this is, this is BLM 757. Okay. And what does that 757 mean? I think that's the area code. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Of that of the area they're representing. Okay, so, and these, and so they're uh, part of, they're affiliated with the regular Black Lives Matter that we all know about. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. Well, that, so that's the interesting thing, right? Um, I actually interviewed him, and it's, it's kind of weird. Uh, They are affiliated. They are under the same name, but he is very um, forthcoming about the fact that they don't get huge support from the national organization. Mm -hmm. Um, They don't support a lot of things that the national organization does. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that they are more super laser focused on their actual area and working with the people that's there. Do they ever get um, political? Now, actually, uh, Spike Cohen was there. Mm -hmm. He was there as well. Yeah, and and he's from the Libertarian Party. Yes. I don't know if I was interrupting you. Mm -hmm. Um, And in one of the speeches, um, the guy, his name is Jafari, he did mention that he wants um, people to start looking at more than just Republican or Democrat, maybe branching out Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, dealing with other, like, third parties and things like that. And there was a, I know, a conservative guy that was there. I can't remember what city he was from, but he was with one of the gun groups, and he was, he's running in, I can't remember what state. Okay. Um, Was this a conservative black guy? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So before, like, I, I mean, I, you know, we really should deep dive into this. Um, I would like to know where everyone's at when it comes to Black Lives Matter. Um, I'll start with me. I believe that Black Lives Matter, every single life on the face of the planet, regardless of, you know, what your complexion has to be matters, in my opinion. Um, you know, and I understand basically, to me, I understand where that, um, where the movement is coming from in everyone's minds, but whenever I deep dive into it, I see a lot of stuff that uh, I don't agree with, you know, uh, ways of life or principles and things like that that are set forth that I personally don't believe believe in. So that's me. All right, so I don't know if you want to tell us, Rhonda, or maybe uh, Latina Locked and Loaded wants to tell us what she thinks about that before we all get into this, but... We can start with you, Rhonda, if you want. What did you think about BLM before you did this? Are you a member of BLM? No, I am not. And so, actually, I was quite shocked when I Mm -hmm. was even invited. Um, Mm -hmm. 
speak. Because first of all, I'm not even going to an unarmed rally amongst unarmed people, so don't even ask me. Mm -hmm. Um, And so to find out they were even hosting a 2A rally, I was super shocked. And then that that they would ask me because I've had some kind of harsh criticism Mm -hmm. for the national organization. Right. Um, As far as the organization goes, I would say that the organization has been co-opted. So years ago, I was doing deep dive research into Black Lives Matter, into the original organizers. Um, You had uh, Darren Seals, who Mm -hmm. was one of the original people in Ferguson that was murdered. Okay, Mm -hmm. I Mm -hmm. believe he was murdered. I think it, if I remember correctly, they may have said some type of suicide or something. Um, Mm -hmm. But he was speaking out about a lot of people coming there, basically co-opting that movement and changing it into something that it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And so I just feel like it's an um, unfortunate, but when something goes that mainstream media, the chances of it's not not being um, co-opted is highly unlikely. Mm -hmm. And so I don't particularly care for the organization as a whole or how it's being shown in the media, but I do know that there are some people that have been to the rallies, been to the protests, that may not know some of the history and its twist and turns of it. You may have some people participating in good faith under what they believe is protesting mm-hmm. police brutality and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it's 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 a lot. I wouldn't necessarily say I'm just a supporter of, of Black Lives Matter. However, I do understand you do have some people maybe working with or that have been a part that uh, aren't bad people. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Um, that's... I, I think I understand exactly where you're coming from there. Joanna, do you, what's your opinion of Black Lives Matter before we deep uh, dive Pretty into much the same. Here? I mm-hmm. obviously believe Black Lives Do Matter. Um, I have issues with the organization. Obviously, everybody knows of the um, political ties, the Marxist ties. Um, I actually attended a Black Lives Matter rally right here in my hometown because I live pretty close to um, the city hall. It's pretty close by, so I walked to it and I checked it out. And I was disappointed that it basically turned into a political rally that has nothing to do with the movement. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, obviously there's the strange tie to the LGBT thing. I don't really understand why that's such a big thing on, like, I don't know if it's still on their website, but on the website they were focusing more on black trans versus just black people. So that kind of brings up the question, what about black men? Um, Mm -hmm. Why don't you care about black men? So mm-hmm. there's definitely like problems with the organization that I have and also problems like, oh, if you really did care about black lives, then why aren't you addressing things kind of like, I don't know if you saw that, that ad, the political ad for, I forgot her name, the girl with the red dress. Yeah, and I call her Kim and, K, but I think it's Kas- yeah. Kasich, Kasich. Yeah, I think that's yeah, her name. Kimberly Kasich, yeah. Um, I think that's a fantastic ad that brings up you know, there's been decades of a certain party, you know, controlling these cities and who are the people who are most suffering in these cities. Mm -hmm. You know, if you really did care about black lives, why aren't you doing anything for these, you know, communities in these cities? So I I think that it should be addressing. And I think that it, it, how much money have these organizations taken and how, what are they actually doing for the communities? Right. I think there's definitely issues that uh, as people of color, right. We, we all deal with and um, I know I feel some I, I, I don't know if this is what you were if what, this is what you were looking for but a lot of times when I see a lot of that message I'm like where's where's the pushback against all the black on black violence mm-hmm. you know where's the pushback against all the people of color that are you know pushed into having abortions and things like that so my thing is I hear people say that often mm-hmm. and I don't think I don't think that's a fair critique. Mm-hmm. Um I think well I will say this. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's a fair critique on the uh, the initial premise of what the organization was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. What the organization was supposed to be was an organization to um to actually focus on police brutality and so that happens to be the name they pick like for example my um aunt has an organization and um the organization says something about like working with one community at a time or something Mm -hmm. like that 
Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's fair for if she's focused here to be like, well, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? That's just a name. That makes chose, sense. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, but. To because be we, fair, we do have to focus on things, right? Ultimately right, in life, we right. have to focus on points. And then, like you said, the things get co-opted. And then by the time in general, we all get catch up to it. The way it's reflecting, we don't like how that's bouncing off of us. Even though we might agree with the, with, like, I agree with the idea that there, that there's, at least there's a, there's an issue here, you know, I agree with that. And, and, and I think that somehow we have to address that and fix it. There's different parts of that issue. Some of it is perception, some of it's reality. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And, and so, um, I do think now where the pushback does come is now when we're in 2020 and you have leaders from the national organization going on TV and saying, Oh yeah, well, you know, this was really a, a trans movement or we were always working on behalf of trans people. Now it's mm-hmm. like you got people sitting at home like, okay, now what are we supporting? Mm-hmm. So I don't think it's wrong for an organization to pick a very, you know, just central thing of what they want to work towards or what they want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, then after when it's you see, I'm sorry, you said you don't think it's okay or you do think it's okay? You do think it's okay for them to pick this one thing that they want to go after or? Yeah. Okay, all right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then when you have that organization that's co-opted, mm-hmm. you know, such and such, I'm not going to say the name because I, I don't know how it is over here at your channel, but... Mm-hmm drops a bag off for certain people and it's like right, you know, Soros listen. you can say it. Rhonda <laughs> listen Ra- Rhonda anything that you want to talk about same thing uh, Joanna anything you guys want to talk about look there might be some people that get triggered or set off the whole reason why I say you got to have your big girl panties on is we're not supposed to necessarily agree with each other this is I'm trying to avoid the just preaching to the crowd thing right, right. so we don't have to agree you know, and I'm open to hear exactly how people think. That's what's important to me, right? For us to have those discussions. But we're probably, I think, we're safely all in the same zone of Soros. And it's, it's, it's you know, people realize that Soros has dumped a, a lot of money into Black right. Lives Matter over the years. What, like a billion dollars or something? Right. Yeah. So it's been co-opted. You've had some stuff with like uh, Colin Kaepernick. Uh, co-opted the movement. A lot of people, including myself, I'm a I'm an immigrant, and uh, my family gave up a lot to come to America. And you know, there's just certain things that don't make me happy. You know, I don't. It doesn't. I don't. There's problems, but I don't hold that against America as a whole or things like the flag. I think those should be the things that unify us. That we should all get behind. If we're trying, you know, either we're trying to burn down America and the idea of America, which I don't want to do. I'll rather fight for that, but fix the problems that we have. And then when people come along and their whole thing is to burn down the idea of what America is, I have issues with that. Right? It's the same thing when it comes to uh, like police violence, for example. You know, I've I grew up in New York City. I've had extensive dealings with police officers, members of my family that are police officers, all kinds of stuff, right? Both ways. I've had cops point guns at my head, everything. You know, I think there's a problem there and we should fix it versus burning it all down. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I, 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 no, it's okay. I yeah. Out. Yeah, you forgot? <laughs> yeah, I think you were saying, I think you were saying that there's people who came in, like we were talking about Soros, that came in and took right. over the whole organization and it went in a completely left direction. Right. Yeah. So I don't, on the original premise that we were all given and a lot of unassuming good faith people that were like, okay, cool. We we care about, you know, issues like police brutality. And they're mm. like, Black Lives Matter. This is about police brutality. This is what our organization focuses on, right? Mm-hmm. But then you have people like Soros dropping a bag off. You have them funneling money mm-hmm. to the DNC. You have people, um, you know, like the Kaepernicks, and now you have the the Bubba Wallaces. You know, you have all these people kind of dipping a little bit into the pot, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the narratives are going each and every way. And now you have to add some of everything right 
Because mm-hmm. now, oh, no, it's not about the nuclear family. Oh, no, it's about trans lives. Oh, no, it's about immigration. Oh, no, it's about, now it's about everything. Mm-hmm. And then people now can come in with that criticism, like, well, so if it's about this and it's about that and it's about this and it's about that, why not that too? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not in... You know, it's it's interesting. And I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but this was the point I was trying to make. A lot of those people that were originally in Ferguson were black men. Mm-hmm. A lot of those people have been murdered now mm-hmm. or in jail. And a lot of the original information about what happened in Ferguson going into Black Lives Matter and how it was co-opted, a lot of that stuff has been scrubbed from YouTube, scrubbed from the internet. Mm-hmm. So, um... Other than the oral histories of people still talking about it, some of those videos that are still available of Darren Seals and just the people that were researching it at the time and, and remembering remembering these things. Otherwise, it's like modern day book burning. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think that's true, and that's why it's interesting that they invited you, right? To get back to the point, I just wanted to set the stage for everyone out there because you know people might jump in here and not know why we're having this discussion or anything like that or where we're at. So, okay, we established that, right? You can go look at look up Rhonda Mary. I see her stuff. I, I like I follow her on Twitter. You know, I see what she has to say. Same thing with Latina Locked and Loaded. Me, of course, I run my mouth. You guys know what I think about stuff. Um, I was surprised when you, you said you were going to this. I think I saw you, Devin, went out there as well, uh, Trenchwork Chronicles. So uh, how did these guys find you? Why did they invite you? Um, basically, they found me through Dev. Okay. And so uh, Dev was kind of like, you know, communi- you know, the person we were communicating with. Mm-hmm. And when Dev told me, I was like, you sure? I was like, have they seen my Twitter? <laughs> have they seen my Instagram? Yeah. You know, he was like, nah, it's cool. He was like this, you know, he was like, you'll see when you meet this guy, but he's a little bit more role. That's the term terminology did mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. All right. And I went out there. Um, actually, it was a super diverse crowd. Um, mm-hmm. You had a lot of different two-way groups out there. I think you had the Black Panthers from... Virginia, you had um, some of the, like, the Boogaloo Boys, you had okay. um, uh, it was another group there. I know Gorilla, did Gorillas and Guns go with you, or you, you uh, met up with him first? Because he was here. He yeah. yeah, he was shouting you out. He was here. I think he had to leave because he said it was his wife's birthday, so happy birthday to his wife. I think John Crump's wife also has a birthday. Happy birthday to uh Mrs. Crumpy as well. Uh, sorry about that. So, okay. So there were a lot of, so it wasn't just uh, Black Lives Matter people there. There were, there were some was other groups mixed a, in. Okay. There was a lot of 2A groups there mm-hmm. that came to support. Um, and that that's why I was happy to experience that moment, to see that, mm-hmm. see that, like, for my own eyes, because it kind of annoys me when mm-hmm. people, like, get online and they're like, why doesn't this story go viral? Why doesn't the news media talk about these people? Why doesn't Black Lives Matter talk about this person that was killed by the police? Well, they do, but you don't know because you aren't there. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people and the main p- people they were talking about were, were the similarities between Duncan Limp and the Breonna Taylor case and how to get rid of things like red flag laws, to get rid of things like um, no not warrants would be helpful to, to everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it was yeah. a lot of different people. Yeah, one of the problems that we we have here, uh, Joanna, feel free to jump in here anywhere that you want to. Uh, the media, <laughs> you know, the whole idea of if it bleeds, it leads. They have their own narrative that they want to push. So um, I don't know anything about Black Lives Matter that the rest of us don't know. Uh, you know, Rhonda Mary may have some insights. That's why we're talking about this. But the media is going to take any group. <laughs> And if that fits their narrative of what they're trying to push, they're going to push that one thing up there. And we just we honestly we don't know. Right. Because we're not on the we're not on the ground fighting that battle every day or even looking at that every day because there's so much to look at. And then it seems like all of us now are on social media. So everyone's not even looking. They're putting their stuff out there and they're like, how come everyone's not looking at me? 
Right. Right. So, uh, what did you? I'm sorry, Joanna. Did you want to ask something? Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, so this particular chapter of BLM, um, did you ever have a conversation with them, with any of them about, or do any of them express their views about what's going on in, let's say, like Portland? Um, I did know, I do know he didn't, uh, nobody directly said anything about Portland. However, they did say some of the things they mentioned while I was there were, uh, you see how far away the police are. They don't bother on protesters. They mentioned that this was about unity. Um, the guy that was over it, he did say that I don't want any of the media people here to switch the headlines. We are all here together for the same um, calls. And he also said that um, they they don't, that it's like peaceful. It's about peaceful protesting. Mm -hmm. And so, no, he didn't call any of the organizations out specifically. He did mention that it's a lot of local chapters that mm -hmm. don't like how the organization is being um, shown nationally and they don't agree with a lot of the things that's going on. But he said he wasn't going to mention those other chapters. He will let them take it upon themselves. Yeah. Can you, um, do you remember his name or something so we can look him up here? Yeah, I uh, said it earlier, but his name is Jafari. J okay. J -A Okay. J A P H A R I. Okay, so it's Black Lives Matter seven five seven. Seven five seven and J uh J A P J A P H A R I. A R I. I'll, I'm just, I'm just gonna look it up so that while we're uh while we're um talking about it. So what uh what's his mission for Black Lives Matter seven five seven? So I know a couple of things he mentioned to me was that um, they are uh, working on things like um, it's like a lot of stuff going down in Virginia with the, the gun laws and stuff like that. It's one particular one that they're focused on right now that I cannot remember mm -hmm. off the top of my head. But mm -hmm. y'all know the stuff y'all heard about like Ralph Northam and everything that's going out mm -hmm. there. Virginia. So I know that's one of the main things that they're focusing on. Focusing on mm -hmm. um, the red flag laws, the uh, the red flag laws, no not warrants. They talked a lot about the Breonna Taylor case and trying to bring more attention to that. Mm -hmm. um, he talked about working with uh, local politicians, regardless of the party line, who would be open and listening to uh, their mission and things like that. Um, those are just some of the things yeah. that I, we talked about. I'm, I just uh, while you were talking there, I just pulled up this um, this article. I could throw I could show it again for the folks out there. So the headline, and this is, where is this, 13 News Now, it says Black Lives Matter 757 speaks out against riot looting. You know, uh, let's honor George Floyd's family, nobody is hurting as much as them, and let's do this uh, for the lives that have been lost and not ourselves. And then it goes into, you know, them talking to him. Uh, Black Lives Matter 757 is speaking out against recent violent protests that happened in Hampton Roads. BLM President Aubrey Jafari Jones explained they did not start or provoke riots like the ones that led to curfews in Hampton and in Virginia Beach. We would like to let the world know that we are in no way, shape, or form involved in any type of violence or misconduct that took place last night or any nights here in the 757, said Jones. So just from just from looking at that, right, and we don't pay attention to this stuff all the time, seems reasonable to me. And, you know, that's one, that's why I really, I really like highlighting people that don't get the mainstream media, like their voices aren't highlighted. And that's why it was important to do this story to me because, you know, people will scream fake news, but, you know, you'll get online and you'll, you know, rage tweet about mm -hmm. fake news, but then you don't give other people that may not look like you, may not think like you, you don't give these other people that same grace. Mm -hmm. And it's like, unless you're going to look at all white people the same way, all Republicans the same mm -hmm. way, all red hats the same way, all NRA members the same way, all of anybody right mm -hmm. uh, the same way then I just don't 
think that's fair. And so mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'm not naive and I would never try to misguide anybody because we have seen a lot of, you know, destruction and very polarizing story. However, that doesn't take away from the fact that there are other stories that exist as mm-hmm. well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Did you, did you have any other questions, Joanna? Um, no, that's pretty I was really interested in, yeah. in, in that, um, I was following it closely, uh, her on, uh, going to this on, on IG. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I think it's really, really, um, an awesome, awesome chapter, um, that really is focusing on the true meaning, you know? And I feel like it's, it's hard to, I think when everything initially happened, I was very supportive of the of it nationally and then when stuff started coming out and I started you know having issues with it it was kind of hard because I still support the movement but it's hard mm-hmm. when you have you know all this stuff tied to it that I don't believe in or think is problematic so mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of awesome I think that's understandable and I think that's a fair assessment yeah that's why everyone has to um attempt at least and it's tough in the current kind of media thing that we're dealing with, but you have to attempt to take control of your own narrative. <laughs> and Absolutely. That's, and that's yeah. something I talk about like like all the time because I even knew like when the George Floyd thing first happened, something that I was really adamant about talking about on YouTube, I was like, Y'all just watch. I was like, right now we're talking about things like ending qualified immunity. I was like, just watch how soon we aren't going to be talking about that. It's not going to be the conversation anymore. Mm-hmm. Then it turned into, you know, syrup bottles and street signs and statues. And mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, what's happening? Do it. They'll do yeah. it every time. Yeah, and, and, we, and we don't have, and then we don't have action. We don't actually fix the stuff that we exactly. all agree on. <laughs> exactly. And if you don't know any better, you'll think the average black person is just out here caring about cert bottles and people yeah. most just want to feel safe. Or if you I'm, don't if you don't know better, for example, uh, I see he was in the chat. I don't know if he's still there, but my friend JP from Blue Rifle Society, that's a police officer in Connecticut. He's not mm-hmm. happy uh, about a, lo- a lot of things that are happening there. Right. In his opinion, the bad cops don't need to be there. They make guys like him, you know, look bad. Right. So the thing is, is when, when, when we have an issue like that, where everyone can come to that table, including the police officers, right? And we could go, yeah, this is no good. We should fix this. We shouldn't have no knock raids. We shouldn't do this. We shouldn't do that. That's what we should focus on. Somehow we get sidetracked. A lot of it has to do with the message and us being able to get out there. It's the reason why I do this. And by the way, if if uh, if Jafari, if he wants to come on here and talk about stuff, I'm open to that, right? I will definitely let him know. Yeah, I think folks out there would would like to um, to hear about that. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.